We place a lot of value on being spectators, don't we? We're always reading, watching, listening, observing the wisdom of others. But what does being in the know really buy you? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. All right, friends, welcome back. It's great to see you. This week, I want to dig in on the topic of what does all this knowledge really get us? First, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what we need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. Now remember, friends, if this episode helps you, please help spread the word. And you can also find us and join the conversation in the Badass Agile Listener Lounge on Facebook. Consider this. How much time do we waste on social media trying to know the latest? Trying to stay on top of the trends? At work, how many meetings do we attend for the purpose of just being looped in or informed? How many books do we read? hoping that it will somehow transform our practice, only to forget most of what we learned, most of what we read, and give up on trying to remember it and implement it when it doesn't yield instant results. What would happen if we stopped doing all these things and started with the assumption that what we need to know will find us? It'll find us in the right moment. Could that be possible? Well, here's what that would do. Number one, it would save us a ton of time. It would save us a ton of confusion trying to make sense of all the competing and differing information out there. But most importantly, it would set a model for others that when it comes to agility, we mustn't spend so much time watching, observing, and consuming because there is a point after which more new information or just more information won't make you better. Now that point could be different for everybody, but the truth is this, that in most cases, The point at which more knowledge, more information, more content won't make you better is pretty darn low. So the alternative then, the alternative is we assume, we expect that the right information will find us at the right time. That means when we need it, it'll be available to us. Well, how's that going to happen if you're not studying, reading, watching YouTube videos, checking out social media, following certain accounts on Twitter? I mean, you can follow mine, but you get what I'm saying. How will it find us if we don't do these things? Well, it won't surprise you to hear that my opinion is that the right information will find us if we are being bold, courageous, and internally certain. To do that, we have to leap. All that wrapped up in a nice little bow is basically saying the right information will find you through practice, not through study. We must do. We must fail. And here's the next point. It's not by doing average things. Unfortunately, the best way to learn, the quickest way to learn, the shortcut to being the best you can be is to lean into the fear zone every day. See, it's usually the case that the scariest thing is the most important thing to do. Isn't that true? I'm going to say that again. The scariest thing is the most important thing to do. Why? I suppose there's something to be said for spending time in the red zone. That's where all the growth happens, right? Muscle doesn't grow unless you tear it. But the reality is it scares you because it's something that you have yet to begin to master. Think about it. The things that frighten you, maybe it's public speaking. Maybe it's troubleshooting or testing. Maybe it's selling your ideas. Whatever it is that scares you doesn't necessarily scare everyone else, which means that some kinds of scary are highly subjective. When I say you need to lean into your fear zone, I'm talking about exactly those things. Not dangling yourself off a high ledge or walking through fire. I'm talking about the things that are scary for you, but not universally dangerous. That's different. 
And you find that whatever it is scares you, scares you because you don't yet have the internal confidence, the internal certainty, probably because you haven't done it enough. You haven't done it enough to clear away the cobwebs of the unknown. You haven't done enough to wipe away the imprint left by past negative experiences. And so if the fear still lingers, it's a clear sign that you haven't done the work yet. What have you been doing with your time? You've been doing other things. I see this all the time in my coaching practice. When we fail to act, when we fail to ask for help, when we fail to call to action, when we fail to take risks, what we do to substitute is busy ourselves with other work that we think is meaningful. Maybe even we pretend it's meaningful. Here's the problem. We end up never getting what we want. We have been educated and conditioned to believe that this is important work, the 300 slide PowerPoint slideshows, the Excel spreadsheet with all the color coding and macros and 4,800 tabs with 22 columns and 2,000 rows, the excessive documentation and surveying and filling out of forms. This is not done stuff. These are not outputs we can put in our customers' hands and give them the value that we so badly want to deliver. When you start doing the things that you fear, and setting aside the things that we believe are an acceptable substitute for real movement. Only then do you begin to learn at the right moment. Only then do you begin to learn without having to study, without having to make sense of hundreds of opinions that are out there in the bookshelves and the social media that surround us. And here's the last thing we must do. We must be truly self-aware. We have to listen to ourselves. We have to know ourselves and be able to get feedback not only from the outside, but from the inside as well, in order to truly know things, to know what we want, to know what we fear, to know what delights us and ignites our passions and creates fulfillment for ourselves. If we're not listening, but instead busying our minds with all of this intake, the busy work, and the continuous stream of new ideas and opinions and elaborations on old themes, if we never settle our minds and get back to the basics, we are closing our minds to learning by flooding our senses with data and stuff. And stuff that doesn't matter. It doesn't help you grow. So when people ask me, how can I make more of my time? How can I own my day, my calendar, my schedule? How can I make more time? for the growth and the learning that actually works, that delivers outcomes, that helps me grow as a practitioner, the answer is simple. Shut off all the outside inputs. Stop believing that you must read or consume or watch or know or train before you can begin developing your own inner sense of certainty, confidence, and right action. You can begin today. But the best way to do that is to clear your mind and your senses of all distractions. Stop doing work just because it's there, just because it's busy work, and focus on the work that delivers the greatest amount of value. Listen for those points of fear and lean into them. Remember, it's not about dangerous things. It's about the things that scare you. If you spend more time practicing this fundamental, I promise you, you'll feel less confused, less torn, more certain, more authentic, more in your own voice, and you'll feel like you're doing meaningful work, work that's meaningful to you and to your clients and customers. And I'm willing to bet, and I know from experience, that this changes lives, and you'll start to enjoy your practice even more. And when you do that, I think that you'll be able to contribute to the future of Agile, the future of work, in new and exciting ways. At least that's my hope for you. My friends, I hope you've enjoyed this. You can check me out as always, look into my services, my courses, or hire me as a speaker by finding me at badassagile.com, on Twitter at badass underscore agile, on Instagram at badassagile. I look forward to seeing you next time, and until then, stay badass. Badass.